John Linville. Recording this uh, for the audio is for the Coker Crew Podcast, episode 70. And the video will be uh, supplemental material for uh, any uh, visual learners out there <laughs> who uh, don't find the audio by itself satisfactory given the nature of this discussion. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, well, pixel art, or more precisely about ways to experiment with it and create it um, and be able to visualize it for the Coco. Um, so let's see if I can get something up here on the screen. Um, just one moment here. Uh, I think that'll do, yeah. All right, hopefully we're now <laughs> seeing the screen with a somewhat jaundiced-looking um, familiar Italian plumber uh, <laughs> character. Um, so so this is an example, of course, of pixel art. And pixel art kind of goes along with the retro computing or retro gaming in general. It basically refers to any kind of that, you know, blocky graphics from back in the day when, you know, 128 by 96 was considered a reasonable resolution. <laughs> um, so, uh, but here what we, how we created this here was, you can probably tell, this is in Google Sheets. Um, this is a spreadsheet from Google. And, um, you know, it's not advertised as a way, at least as far as I know, uh, as a way to create any kind of artwork. And most people don't think of it that way, but it is possible. So um, basically you just have to, to set up the, the, the uh, your sheet appropriately and um, apply what's called conditional formatting. So I'm going to walk you through some of that, and um, that's why I've created the video, because I'm sure it'll be <laughs> kind of confusing on the audio. I'll try to hopefully make it reasonably clear either way. So anyway, I'm going to go over here, and this, this is the page when you start a new spreadsheet i'm going to click on blank and uh so there we go untitled spreadsheet uh, change that to pixel art demo so um so where do we start so probably the first thing you know as you can see this is a spreadsheet and you got this kind of traditional looking rectangular um, cells, and um, there probably are graphics modes that have a, a match for this, uh, but I can, th I can think of a few options, but um, in general, um, most of the time your, your aspect ratio for your cells or, or for your pixels is not going to look quite like this. So um, why don't we start off, so we can click this upper, upper left box here that selects the whole screen and uh, you start uh, kind of moving down the size of the box or changing the size of the box. We'll make this one a little more square looking. Oh. There we go. So we got squares or squarish. So there's your first uh, um, step. Now, uh, the next step, you don't really have to do this one, but I find it helpful. If I can kind of limit the screen to do the number of cells to the number of pixels on the screen in the right proportions, that sort of thing. So, um, let's start from here. We're going to go with 128 by 96 because that's the P mode one uh, uh, resolution. We'll start here at cell 97 and then or row 97 and then go down to the bottom and hold shift and, and uh, select all, the, all those rows and then I can go and um, the uh, right click and then I can uh, delete there's a menu entry delete rows 97 to a thousand so there they're going and so um, that's pretty cool and the next thing um, go back and select that top left button so I've got this all selected uh, it was there to um, make things a little bit easier here. Um, as you can see, there's only 26 columns, A through Z. 
and um, I'd like it to be 128. Um, and that's uh, we're gonna get into trying to insert more columns. Um, I'm gonna do it 26 at a time. That's why I selected them all because you can do it one at a time if you like, but <laughs> 26 at a time is a little bit better. So I insert 26 columns. I did that once, um, twice. Three times, um, and then a uh, fourth time, and that that should give us five sets of twenty six, which will give us what one hundred and thirty um, columns total, and um, this too too many so we go here and select um the top left of um column dy and then go down and hold shift key and select the bottom right cell and then column dz then i can right click there um delete columns dy and dz so uh that gives us um Um, I should give us 128 by 96 um, cells. Now let's see if we can. Yeah, so if you right click, uh, you'll see it so you can insert 96 rows, insert 128 columns. When you've got them all selected, those numbers come from the amount you already have. So at least it um, confirms we have 128 columns and 96 rows. So, hooray. And now we've got all the cells selected, which um, we're going to go to format and um, conditional formatting. And so a little thing pops up, conditional format rules there on the right. And uh, we're going to apply it to the range A1 to DX96, our whole spreadsheet. Um, we're going to say format rules. We're going to go down to is equal to, and um, uh, we're going to select value zero, and um, we're going to go down to formatting style. You get the fill color, and we're going to select for zero. We're going to select green, and. Um, let me show you something first here. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to put zero uh, in the column um, the A1 or um, yeah A1. Put zero there, and you can see that it's, it's, it's um, colored that cell green, but you can still see the zero um, because we have different colors for text versus this background. So um, go back, select A1, and we can do uh, Control C, which for in Google Land means copy. <laughs> you go back and then click that little top left box that selects everything again, and uh, now you can do Control V for paste with zeros everywhere, and you'll see that everything now turns green. But you can see all the zeros. So go back over to your formatting rules, and um, there's a, a text color selection. And you're going to go and get another color drop down and um, plug green there. And so now you get a solid green box. So the, the text is the same color as the background. So it's a little nicer there. Um, but it's, it's not quite enough. So we're going to add another rule, which puts it back to is equal to, or to uh, is equal to one. And then um, for one um, is going to select yellow. Do the same thing for the text, and then we're going to go to two, um, and two is going to, and uh, need text, and then um, get uh, three. However, three is going to be red. Go for the text. 
And um, pretty much it for our rules. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so there you go. Let, let's start a little bit here. Now, if you go in and you you already kind of showed that with color zero, but if um, you put in like a color three here, um, hit enter, it'll turn red. And uh, you can go around and, and uh, do that for different colors. Two here. Um, all very good. So, um, let's see. So, clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to show you something neat here. So, this, this isn't a drawing tool. There's not a lot given to make it any easier for drawing. <laughs> uh, it's not that bad. You can type in the numbers. It's sort of paint by numbers in that respect. But it could get a little tedious. Um, but if you do have something like here, uh, you can select your color. And you see it outlines the box. And then it puts a little blue square at the bottom right corner of the box. And now if you select that square, oh, yeah, you can kind of move it out. Um, and um, it helps with the drawing. So you don't have to type in those three everywhere. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to draw it to that, another. Oh, the silence is great radio. Um, all right, and now I'm going to go here and we'll value one. You do control Z for undo. Um, this is giving me some trouble, but. You can draw things. <laughs> um, and uh, so we're going to make like a little Swiss style flag here, almost. Um, first art ever, perhaps. But there you can kind of see how it's done. Um, so uh, your spreadsheet is still a spreadsheet. It's still just got just numbers in the background. It's just showing them a little bit differently. And uh, like I said, copy and paste and whatever all works. So like if we go back to this, what I was originally showing you, um, this has been set up in a, pretty much the same way. And uh, we can select our Mario like <laughs> uh, drawing. Um, Control C for copy. You can bring that over here. Put on position him and you can control V to paste. And there he is. So that's pretty neat. And it's a pretty cool thing. You can use this to prototype your pixel art. Um, and you can do a lot of drawing this way and experimentation. It's, um, like I said, it's kind of a cool thing. Um, but uh, let's see. Well, there's a, since we're talking about Coco, um, there's another aspect that might be cool to show. So um, why don't we um, I'm gonna come down here where it says sheet one down in the bottom left, and let's say um, rename. I'm gonna call it uh, CSS equals zero. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna take that again and say duplicate. It'll create a, a copy of that. So now we're on the copy of. So we're gonna rename that one. To CSS equals one. So this is two, effectively two spreadsheets and two separate sheets. You can change them all day long if you want. Uh, it would be kind of cool if they were linked for this this particular feature, but unfortunately they're not. Um, but um, and because of the way the 6847 graphics chip works on the Coco, if you have the CSS value. Um, Set to zero versus one, you get different um, uh, 
color selections. So in the CSS equals one version, um, we're going to pick different colors to make it look more like what the Cocoa would actually do. We're going to change both the text and the uh, and the uh, you know the backgrounds for each one. But um, you know, we'll just go like this. And so, Sam. It looks a little weird. We have it in blue skin. Not that yellow skin looks so good, but. <laughs> um, no way, if you, if you have both of these available, uh, you could test your, um, um, your graphics and easily check both color sets to see if one somehow looks better than the other. Um, it's a nice feature to have available. Um, let's see, our final color three um, with this color set select value is orange. So there you go. Um, and so, you know, you could draw on one of these screens and then if you could, then you could do, you know, cut and paste the entire screen. And, um, um, and then just check and you can kind of flip between them, see which one you like better, which one makes more sense or is more usable. Kind of a cool idea. Um, all right. So all this to me leads up. Um, you know, this is great for do, pretending to be an artist <laughs> and doing, you know, some graphics layout, whatever. It gets you the basics, but <clears throat> you're still going to have to figure out a way to get that on the color computer um, and get the data in place. And by itself, is not very helpful. And so I don't have a, a, a nice answer for that yet. But, um, you know, part of the reason I thought it was important to um, to get the uh, screen dimensions to the proper dimensions that uh, you know, of what the Cocoa screen actually is, because I think it'll help with writing a tool that can then convert your spreadsheet data. Um, and um, so you could um, I don't say. Yeah, I'm not seeing the export value. Anyway, you can. Um, um, export this somehow. I know we're not <laughs> having any trouble finding it. Uh, you can export it to a comma separated value. Um, so there you go. You can have a, you can download this in a comma se separated value or one of these other formats, whatever ones you think you can process. CSV should be fairly simple to process. TSV, a tab separated value, probably pretty easy to process with a script in like, you know, Python or, or even Bash. Um, and that will give you uh, a table with all these numbers that are, you know, three, 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 whatever. Now, on the Cocoa, you're going to have four pixels packed together into a single byte, and that byte value will be um, kind of bit mapped in there, shall we say. So, you could have a tool that takes that comma separated value or tab separated value list and it will take, you know, three, 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 and then turn that into a, a, a hexadecimal FF value. And then you could process it and then you could do it for the whole screen of the tool. You could probably tell the, the tool, um, a set of, um, you know, like a box dimensions or whatever that you want. Uh, something like that. Um, anyway, you could, should be able to post-process the screen with some kind of fairly simple tool and, and uh, have it output um, assembly like a FCB statements or, in, you know, in basic maybe data statements or in C, you know, some sort of um, uh, car array value or something like that. It should not be that hard to figure out. I just don't have it. <laughs> Wanted to go ahead and get this out to you, but I thought it was worth mentioning. I'm sure to be a question for somebody. Anyway, well, what do you think about that? You can uh, 
have a pretty convenient tool that you can draw a pixel art and have it represented reasonably similar to what the Cocoa will actually show. And it's available. It's available for free to anyone with a modern computer. <laughs> Thank you, Google. So, kind of cool. Um, so, that's my uh, tech talk for this month. Um, my tip for uh, you, anyone wanting to develop for graphics for the Cocoa out there that doesn't already have a solution, you may want to try this. So, what do you think? Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm, of course, John, J O H N, at CocoaCrew.org, or let us all know feedback, F E E D B A C K, at CocoaCrew.org, C O C O C R E W dot O R G. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for um, downloading the podcast. All right. Be good. We'll see you.